guys, my name is Joe and welcome back or welcome to welcome back home video. My on about and um, today we're gonna to be doing a sort of dark furry kind of thing. Um It's my nips and show. Oh god who knows. Let's hope not. Um so let's get straight to it. I'm gonna head into voiceover and you know Hi you guys, so we're starting off with the Cover FX Blurring Primer and I'm putting that in the T-Zone and pulling it out. Next we're going in with the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless Normal to Oily Skin and I'm in shade 105. Using our Real Techniques Blending Sponge, we're just bouncing that everywhere. This is a buildable product and I do normally go in with two layers to get the desired coverage that I want. And next we're going in with the Nip and Fab Concealer. I'm in shade 05. Um, this isn't actually to highlight my face, but just to build up coverage on those places as we go in later for a dramatic highlight around those areas. And of course, with every product that you're applying with a beauty sponge, you want to tap and not drag as not to disturb the products underneath. I then like to take a clean Real Techniques beauty sponge um, for my powder because you don't want to mix your creams and your powders and I'm just setting all those areas that we place the concealer um, and once we've done that I also like to take any excess and set the rest of the face. I'm now taking a Tarte blending brush and we're going in with a straight black from the Make On Revolution and Sophie X palette. Um, obviously with using black, we wanna really, really blend this out. Now with the Smithies Coloured Hair Spray, it's time to change the appearance and spray my hair black. Look at them peepers, blues. Um, and then we match up the contour and sharpen it a little bit, deepen it and bring it into the eye socket and pop in the contact. Now we're going into the same palette and taking that red shade and we're taking it up into the bridge of the nose, over the mouth and across the eyebrow. Remember to blend up and bring into the outer V of the eye. Match up the contour on the other side so we don't look lopsided. Um, I've got torticollis, it's an issue. And we pop in our second Solero and match up the shading on the other side. Remember, once we've marched out, see if your looks balanced. I now take the Mayron Makeup uh, Pro Color Wheel in Bruise and run those along the inner portion of my mouth, blending out the color as we go. We want to try and create a sort of controlled grunge, if you were. Um, so make sure you're controlling that mess. Now, taking a dance blending brush, we're going to dip into that bruise red. And yes, he did tap off a cream product, ignore. Um, and we're going back into those places, the inner bridge of the nose and the outer portion of the eye. And we're intensifying that color and smoking it out and pulling it up the whole time. Uh, we're pulling it up to lift the face and give that kind of furry fade. So remember to blend, blend, blend like something that blends an awful lot and go back over it with your beauty sponge we are now going into the mayron cream white um and this is the dramatic highlights i was talking about using that stark white the good thing about a cream product is that it will blend with the heat of your skin and sink right in um so you can go as harsh as you want and it won't look jarring or out of place we're now going into the black, don't look at him, I don't know why he's pointing to the red, um, and we're filling in those eyebrows. So you just want to angle them a little bit and make sure that they're very intense. I then draw up from the arch and some hairs in the front and I blend those out. And of course, remember to complete on the other eye. And taking the Mayron liner, I also Line the waterline in black and using the red, smudge out the lower lash line. Uh, then I retensify the outer V with the black and go back in to blend, blend, blend like. Still cannot think of something that blends an awful lot. 
And same as before, I go down the bridge of the nose and across the mouth to smoke out that effect and give it a grunge. Remember to repeat everything on the other side. So we're matchy matchy. And now we take the same cream white from before on a pecker brush. Uh, this is a Mark Reed signature and I'm going in and cutting the under of the bridge of the nose right above the socket and blending that down under the eye. Going down the nose and I also do the cupid's bow. Still doing the nose here but there we go, cupid's bow. And now to the fun stuff, taking a Mayron Paradise paint in red. I'm using a breathy sponge just to kind of roughly mark out where I want these colours to go. The sky is a very abstract piece of work and you cannot go wrong. It is literally up to your interpretation. I then take an oil brush because I want those brush strokes and I start building up that red to a more intensified colour. Then we go in and we take a mauve and doing the same thing I place that beside everywhere I have placed the red. This is just your base work and in no way means does it have to be the most perfect or clean work as you can see I am just going ham throwing the colour down. I then go in with Lagoon Blue and again place that just beside the purple and kind of blend those in but really at this stage as I've just stated not important just have fun throw the colours down and we'll get to it again dark blue shan't repeat myself stick it down anywhere and build up those colours. And now taking the beach berry from Mayron, it is like a more, well, beach toned red, I suppose. And again, we're putting that down anywhere. You can see I'm using more red than what I have of the other colours because I really want the redness of the sky to come through. Um, and you'll see why in a second why I'm concentrating this colour so much compared to the others. And when there's hardly any product on my brush, I'm then going in and just starting to run that along and kind of blend the colours in. Now this is where we create the sky. Taking the Laguna Blue from before, I'm very lightly running it along in horizontal lines, just go the one direction across the whole body. Uh, the water will blend the colours together and give you an effect of a sky with the different colours, the sunsets. You know, it's very good, very easy technique. And it really builds up those colours and makes it look like you took so much more time than what you actually have. I then take Sky Blue and on a smaller oil brush I then go in and just pick up some of those highlights. What's good about this is that line work's already done for you with doing the horizontal stripes. So you can see where you want just a little peak of light. And it's these little touches that really marry the look together and give it a cohesion. I then take Foxy from Iron and do the same thing, just picking up where I want a little bit more warmth in that sky and if there's any areas that are too solid, just breaking those up. Then taking the white from before, I start creating the silhouette of the moon. Uh, this is very easy, just a semicircle on the chest. Then taking black, I go in and start blending around. You want to dab this colour, um, that way you're getting an uneven texture, which is what we want. Then, taking the Mayron black paint, I then go in and intensify that colour, dabbing it the whole time. You don't really want to sweep this too much as it will blend the colour together. And we want it to be that kind of grungy, shadow, foresty kind of feel. He says as he is literally swiping that everywhere. But listen to me, don't watch him. I am then taking Deep Sea, which is a blue toned green, and I am running that along areas of the black. Then with the white I'm going in and I want to intensify that white moon shape because this is going to be the silhouette of our line work which we're going to do in a minute. So just stab it around and then blend it out. <laughs> and just make sure that the centre is white. I then take this silver colour, it's brilliant something or other. And with metallics you really want to use more water than what you would for a normal paint cake um, the more water you use the more smooth your color application will be and I just dab that out with my finger after running along the bottom now to the true uh, I'm just dabbing the paint because I don't want this to be solid as you would if you were doing like a skull and you wanted that solid bone texture this is shadows it's a dark forest I want it to be jagged 
I want that line work to be a little disorientated. So what I'm doing is just stabbing on the colour and then taking a nail brush, a nail art brush, I am just pulling little branches from the main body of the tree that we've just built. I love using nail art brushes for detail work because if you think how small a nail is that art technicians are working on, it gives you such clean lines and I also prefer uh, brushes that have harder bristles on them. I just think they're easier to work with. Those face painting brushes, um, like a Lily Tapered, I think they're a little bit too soft for my style personally. I like to really have precision and control in what I'm doing, even doing a more grungy look like this. So when you're happy with how your tree's looking, I then take that oil brush and spatter some black and look at the flow of the piece. You want to make sure that you're balancing out your artwork whenever you're doing it. Uh, the body can't be disconnected from one another or to the face. Um, and then just simply repeating the same techniques that we've done before, but making the branches more big, more jagged. We're running that along the shoulder end of the chest to give that cohesion so there's not just one tree sitting on its own in the middle of a forest. Hi again! Okay, so now we're finishing up the face. As I was saying, you want to add the cohesion. So taking that black, I'm running that along the cheek contour. I then bring it up into the cupid's bow and I line the top of the mouth. And here you can really see what I was saying about that cream white. Under the eye, it isn't like a stark white, it's melted in with the colour. I then take a line, run that down the mouth, extend the lip by smiling and pulling out the smile lines. Pulling an eye down the line, down the bridge of the nose, on the eyebrow and on the nose. And what I like to do is just put my brush and kind of move my head in the opposite direction that I'm going. Now do you want glitter without the hassle? Well you need the devil's kiss. Here we're using Bitchery and Dark Soul in the look. And I'm just tapping that on the eyelid and I'm really grunging that out. I want that glitter texture all over. Uh, with pressed glitter. Uh, there's no fallout, so I take uh, dance blending and I just blend it out and I'm putting that all over. So under the eyes, on the cheeks, on the mouth, I then take it onto the body to add that cohesion as I was just saying. And from the inner corner, I then smoke that out. Press glitters give such an effect to look, especially this one. It really marries the purple from the body onto the face with that bit tray. Now with the elephant pink, I add in a nose ring and a crown and we're not finished there. We then take a rose, spray that and get your pose on. Just look intense. Bye!